Flutter announced a few months back on the new navigation and routing system. It was a good feature for Flutter Web as it handles URL handling and web history, which is a good direction, right? Well, there were reactions in the navigator being complicated, how it sucked, the verboseness, and just a lot of questions on the new navigator. Well, frets not, there is a new package that is called Beamer. Ready to beam up, Jim. Which is a wrapper for the Navigator 2.0 built by Sandra Lovnicki. Apologies if I mispronounce, but he built a package that lets us use Navigator 2.0 effortlessly. So this is a little demo on what we are going to build. So it is a simple book review web app. And then if you were to click on a single page, you will go to the book review. And then if you were to change your book ID from one to three, then it will change accordingly. And then if you will change it from book ID three to book ID six, it will change accordingly. And then if I were to press on this back button, it will lead me to the home page. And then if I were to use this back button on our web browser, let's see if it works. So it goes back to six, it goes back to three, and it goes back to one, and it goes back home. Great, that is exactly what we want. And this is how you use the Beamer package. So you have an initial location, which is your home location, and then you have your beam locations or the location that you navigate to. So you will navigate to the home location and the books location. And then you have a not found page and you will use the material app for this project. So it's pretty simple and intuitive. If you want to follow along, the link is in the description. So let's get started. So let's create this home location as this is the easiest. The home location is simply an extended class from this beam location object. And it has two getter methods that are required. The first one is this pages getter method. And the second one is the path blueprint method. So inside this pages method over here, it is a list of beam page. And inside this beam page, you could see that you need a key or a value key and you will pass in the string form of your page. So for your home screen, we will put in the home word. And then for the page, we are going to pass in a home screen page widget. So let me explain what is a beam location and its two getter methods. And lastly, what is a beam page? So the beam location is an abstract class that contains pages, path URLs, and queries. So the two required methods are pages, which is a page stack for navigator when redirected. And then for the path blueprint, it's pretty simple. It is a URL identifier, for example, backslash home. And for the beam page, it creates a material page route for our navigation. And the key property helps with optimizing rebuilds. So now let's add this home location inside our project. So inside your project, you could see that there is the Beamer package that is added in inside your dependencies. So now the next thing is we also have this file that is called beamlocations.dart and this is where all of our beam locations will be located. So let's go to this file and let's create a class that is called home location and we are going to extend it with a beam location. So make sure you import it from the beamer.dart file. Then we are requiring two getter methods. So let's create the two missing overrides. The first one is the pages. So for this pages, it requires a list of a beam page. And then the second one is the path blueprint. So it needs a string. So what we can do is we can go to our main.dart file where our home page is located and we can create a simple static variable inside our home page and we'll call it beam location. And this will return us a beam page that has a value key home and the home page as its own page. Make sure you import the library beamer and then we can do the same with the path. So we're going to create a static variable called path and this will have a single backslash. So let's go back to our beam locations 
and then we can simply put in home page let's auto import and we're going to use the beam location same goes to the path blueprint we're going to type in home page dot path so let's save this and we have successfully created our first beam location so make sure you save in both files what if you have this URL where it's redirecting to a page and its ID, which is number one? Well, first of all, we need to change our path blueprint, right? So we're going to create a new beam location that is called books location. And then for our pages, we will still put in our home page. And for our path blueprint, it will be slightly different. So you will have this first path parameter that is called books and then you have this colon ID. So the colon is necessary in the path blueprint if you might have a path parameter from the browser from the user. So how do we get the ID to redirect us to our book page? So luckily the beam location has a name constructor that is called with parameters. So this has the path parameter and the query parameter. You might be confused of this super keyword. Luckily, I'm going to explain to you what this super constructor is. So this will actually help you understand how this beam location works with the path parameter. The super constructor in Dart usually happens when you have a parent class. So in the same lines of beam location, let's create a fake class that's called laser location. So the laser location constructor over here has an argument called location. And if you were to create an instance of a laser location, you will print out this statement that says laser location equals to the location that you have passed through in the location argument. Then in the future, you might create a child class that inherits from the laser location that is called photon location. So the photon location constructor now has this colon and this super constructor method. And there is this string Mars in it. And inside the constructor body, you could see that we have another print statement that says calling from photon location. So this is what happens when you create an instance of a photon location. First of all, you will call the photon location class. And once you create this photon location, it will call the photon location constructor. But before it goes to the photon location print statement, it has to go to this super constructor. So this super constructor is actually calling from the laser location that we have extended. So in the background, we are actually creating an instance of a laser location. So inside the laser location class, we are activating the constructor. And the constructor itself has this location argument that is also what we have added inside our super constructor over here. Now, this means that this Mars string will actually be inside the location argument of the laser location constructor. And this will activate this print statement. So what do you think will be the output for this laser location print statement? Well, if you guessed it correctly, the output will say laser location Mars. Once we are done with the super constructor, then we will go to our photon location constructor body, which activates the print statement and our output will be calling from photon location. So in summary, the super constructor will get activated first that's why you see this laser location Mars statement. So once that's done, then you will call the child constructor body. And that's why the calling from photon location is the second print statement. So once you have some sort of idea of how the super constructor works, then going back to our beam location. So when we are passing, for example, a path inside our with parameters named constructor, this will activate the super dot with parameters constructor. As you could see that it has a named parameter that is called path. So in the background of this with parameters, it actually 
assigns the path parameters in the beam location object. So if you were to create an instance of a inherited beam location object with the path parameter, then the path parameters property, which is a map type, will be assigned. So using this path parameters, we are able to create this simple if statement to say that if the path parameter contains this key ID, then we will be able to go to this book page, which is wrapped around in this beam page, or it's just a wrapper for a material page route. Using this specific key according to the ID that we have pressed. That's why we have passed in a value key with a specific ID according to the word book. Then in our page parameter, we can pass in a book page widget where we will get the first book that has the same ID as the path parameter ID. So let's add this books location in our beam location file. So we can copy and paste the home location and then we can change the word home to books location. The next thing is we're going to change the path blueprint. So a better way is to go to our book page and then if you were to remember correctly, we create a static variable which has the books ID with the colon as well. Then in our beam locations, instead of home page, we can put in the book page. Let's auto import and remove the dot path. Let's change this to a block body and let's add in the if statement. So there is this path parameters over here and we're going to make use of this contains key method and we are going to make use of the string ID. So the second thing is that we need to add in our named parameter with parameters. So if you can, so if you command click the beam location, you could see that there is the with parameters named constructor. We can highlight and copy this. Before we go back to our beam locations file, you could see that we have the path parameters. That's basically an empty map. All right, so let's go back to the beam locations.dart file and then we are going to paste our named property with parameters. So instead of beam location, we're going to type in books location. And then for our super methods over here, we're going to remove this whole thing. And then we're going to type in super dot. So we're going to make use of the with parameters. So copy this and paste this. Let's add in the brackets. Now we're going to pass in our named parameter into our with parameters named parameter, such as this. So pass in path with the path and pass in the query with the query. With every named constructor, we need to add in our own constructor. So books location constructor, but we will reference it to the beam location constructor as well. So before we return the book page, we can just comment this conditional and then we can go to our main.dart. So let's save this in both files. Then inside our my app widget, we're going to wrap this material app widget with the beamer widget. So the beamer widget has some required named parameter. So let's first change this child parameter to the app parameter. And then we're going to add in our initial location. So our initial location will be the home location. So we're going to add in the instance and auto import. Secondly, we're going to add in the beam locations. So the first one will be the home location and the second one will be the book location. Once we are done, we can go to the home page and right under our inkwell, which is on the book, we want it to redirect it to our book page. So we can make use of the beamer.ofcontext.beam2. Sounds like a Star Trek reference. Ready to beam up, Jim. And then for the location, we need a beam location. So it will be our books location dot with parameters. Let's add in a semicolon. And the parameter that we are going to pass in is the path parameter. And this requires a map string. Let's add in a comma. So what do you think the key will be? So if you go back to the beam locations dot dart, the key that we need is this string ID. So let's go back to main dot dart. So let's add in the key ID. And what will be the value? 
So the value will be the book ID. So we can type in book dot ID. However, for this parameter, if you were to hover over it, you could see that for the path value type, it must be a string. So we're going to convert this to a two string method. So let's add in a comma as well. So now the thing is, once we pass in an ID after we press on a book cover, this will then activate the beam location pages. So that's why we have this if statement to say that if the path parameters that's being passed through this with parameter named constructor contains a key of ID, this means we are going to the book page. But we are not going to go to the book page without a beam page. So the beam page requires a page that is called a book page. And it requires a book as well. So for the book, we need a specific book according to the ID. So we can type in the word books. Let's auto import. And we're going to find the first where the element or the book. Let's change this into a block body. We need to return a boolean from a conditional statement. Basically saying that if the book dot ID is equal to the path parameters where the value is from the key ID. However, this is an equality operator. So the type should be the same. For this path parameters, you could see the type is string, but for the ID, it is an integer. So we're going to put in a two string method. All right. Lastly, we want to optimize the rebuild. So we're going to add in the key or value key to be specific. And the value will be a string that is a book, but with the specific ID. So let's put in the string interpolation of the path parameters key ID. So now it makes a little bit more sense when we see in our main.dart that we are beaming to this specific book location parameter with the path that we pass in with the key ID. So now let's save this in both files and let's see if it works. If I were to click for example on this enemy book. All right, so it is working. You could see that the enemy book has the book ID number four. What if I were to go to number three? Press enter and it goes to the third book which is the Fight Club book. And now if you were to click on this back button, it will redirect or beam us to our homepage. Now the best part is, if you were to go back on the web browser, we will go to the book number three. And the first book that we went to is book number four. Great. And then the first, first page, home page. And if you want to see the history, you can press command Y or control Y for Windows. And the different pages have been saved inside our web history. Great. In summary, we learned what is a beam location, which is an abstract class that has our stack pages and our path blueprint. And we also learned the beam page, we create a material page route with the property key to optimize rebuilds. Moreover, we learned what is a super constructor and how it is being used in this beamer package. And lastly, we roughly know what's beam2 method, which basically redirects us to the required page according to the beam location. And if you want to learn more about Flutter Web, you can look through to my different web courses where I teach you how to build a developer portfolio that's responsive in mobile and desktop, and also a landing page in Flutter Web with Firebase. That's about it. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want more of this kind of video, subscribe down below. And comment down if you think this Beamer package is what you're looking for. Stay safe and all the best. Bye bye.